Python 14 is out, and it comes with new superpowers to improve the performance of your Python scripts using multithreading. As you might know, Python supports multithreading in a simple way, using the GIL, which stands for Global Interpreter Lock. But it has a main drawback, as it enforces that only a single thread at a time can execute code. It prevents your multithreaded code to achieve multi-core performance. So if you launch 10 threads or one thread, you will get the same performance if you run CPU-intensive tasks, no matter how many cores has your CPU. But Python 14 provides us a new free-threaded version that removes the GIL entirely and unlocks parallelism for multi-threaded Python code. I will show you how you can easily try this new version and we'll go through a code example. But before, I will provide a bit more of context about what's the GIL and why we needed it. Let's go. Python was created in 1991, and at the time there were no multi-core processors available. The first one came in 2001, so 10 years later, by IBM the Power 4. So, keep in mind that when Python was invented, all that mattered was single-threaded performance. So in 1992, when they introduced support for multi-threading in Python, they used the GIL to avoid sharing code that is not thread safe between multiple threads. The GIL works as a main lock that each thread needs to acquire to be able to execute instructions, thus preventing other threads to make progress while a thread is executing code. It has a few advantages. First of all, it has a low impact on single-threaded program, as you only have to acquire one lock to be able to execute instructions with the interpreter. It also helps Python to keep a simple memory management system called reference counting, as the implementation was not thread safe at the time. Finally, it also let Python leverage C libraries that are not thread safe and is simple to implement because you just have a single lock compared to implementing fine grain locking to let multiple thread make progress at the same time. So the GIL sounds great, but it has a main drawback. It prevents your multi-threaded code to leverage multi-core parallelism. So here is how it works. You have, in this example, three threads. Each of them want to execute three instructions, and we have the GIL. So when the program starts, each thread will compete to acquire the GIL and be able to execute its instructions. So in this example, thread one managed to get it first. Then it's able to execute the three instructions, as you can see on the timeline below. After that, it releases the GIL. Now, it lets the opportunity for another thread to acquire the GIL and make progress. In this example, thread three managed to get it and will be able to execute its instruction. And finally, we have thread two that executes. So as you can see, we have no parallelism at all. Even if we have 10 cores on the computer, the sequence of operation will be thread one, then thread two, then thread three. So the same performance as running the nine instructions using a single thread. Now, to be fair, Python has a way to leverage multi-core performance, but it's not with multi-threading, it's called multi-processing, as you have to spawn multiple processes. The problem is that those processes have a much bigger overhead compared to threads, as they each have their own separate memory space and their own interpreter. And that's how Python 3.14 comes to help us, because it has two versions. So you have the first version with the GIL, so the usual Python implementation, and the free threaded version that come without the GIL at all. So using the free threaded version, you get multi-core performance, with multi-threading. You don't have to use multi-processing. Here is how it works. So as before, we have our three threads, each one wanting to execute three instructions. And let's say we have more than three calls, so the capability to execute code in parallel. Now, there is no GIL. So as soon as the program starts, each thread will be able to be executed by a different call. So you get this result. Typically, we'd get something like three times performance approximately, compared to the first example, when we had the GIL. And as you can see, the instructions are now interleaved between the thread, because multiple cores are executing the instructions at the same time. Okay, so now we understand better the context. What is the GIL? Why we needed it? 
Now it's time to dive into the code and see how you can quickly use the 3.14 free-threaded version and concretely see the speed up using multi-threading with this new implementation. Okay, so first of all, before going to the example, I will show you quickly how you can install the free threaded version easily. So I use UV, I recommend you use UV too. And using UV, it's super simple. You just run UV Python install 3.14 T. T for the free threaded version. The version without the T is the standard guild version. So here I already installed it, but you can do that and then you are able to run the example that I will share on GitHub. So let's take a look at the example. The example is simple, we import threading to create multiple threads and time to measure the time to execute. And we create a CPU task. So it's a task that uses CPU instructions, not using IO. So here we just make a huge loop where we iterate and increment a simple variable. Then we have two functions. First, run sequential. Run sequential will not use any thread to run, so it's like running uh, using a single thread. So we just start the time, call the task for n times, and return the duration. Finally, we have the run threads version. So here, for each run, we'll spawn a different thread. So we expect to have the time of run sequential divided by the amount of threads that we have for the free threaded version. For the guild version, as I will show you, it will be exactly the same time between both. So here we create an array for the result of the threads. And for each run, we create a new thread and we start it. We append it to this array. And finally, we join. So it basically says, wait until all the threads are done and we give back the duration again. Finally, we print the CPU time. So run sequential and run threads. And here we run for four uh, operations. So let's see first how it behaves with the gil. So here I have this command. So you can specify in the environment variable that you want to enable the gil in this new version. So you say python gil equal one, saying enable python gil, and then we run this script. Okay, so as you can see, we take one second to execute the first sequentially, so using a single thread. And we also take one second to execute the same code, but with multiple thread. As we saw, the guild prevents multi-threading to achieve multi-core performance. Now, interestingly, if we disable the guild, so we use the new free-threaded version, and we run the code, it's much faster. So we have, for the sequential time, we have one second, and we have 0 0.37 seconds for the threaded time. So as you can see, just disabling the guild gives us multi-threading performance and we can leverage the multi-cores on our CPUs to reduce the time of Python scripts. So that's it. We saw what was the guild, why we needed it, and how you can quickly install the free-threaded version that removes the guild and compare the time to show that without the guild we get multi-core performance. So give it a try and let me know in the comments if you liked it. See you in the next one.